Kale Hope here, and uh, in today's uh, topic, I'll be talking about, well, that's disappointing. So, about two hours ago, um, I ended up getting a sale for one of my affiliate products through a um, one of my affiliates. Woo woo! But um, two hours later, I get an email. Um, and I thought it was just a regular request for, say, a refund or something like that. I mean, that sometimes happens. Uh, however, this is the first time that I've ever, for a digital product, ever got um, the, a uh, PayPal dispute for it. And we all know anyone that does anything with um, PayPal online in in pretty much any marketing niche um, there's been a lot of accounts that have been limited or um, just flat out banned um, so I was really kind of surprised in a way um, I shouldn't be surprised but I, I don't know it's it's really disappointing because this person could have just contacted me through email through support I mean it's it's freely available um should have just asked for a refund it's within the time for it obviously um but instead they took it upon themselves to um make things worse by simply um two hours later turn around and found a a uh, dispute with paypal which i didn't think it needed to come to that but so be it um and so when I took a look at it, of course, it asked me for my response there, um, which of course just ties things up worse, you know, for it. But um, basically they misspelled, um, I think they were trying to say not as uh, described, which is total bull crap because the affiliate product is in depth on uh, Google AdSense and the whole thing goes through everything from sending it up to how to uh, position yourself to make money through uh, creating niche sites um, and using AdSense the whole product so if someone has gone through it in depth within the time that they purchased it logged into the members area downloaded the product and consumed all the content and then turned around within that two hours and indicated that um, that they didn't get anything out of it and that it's not as described um, and that they had time to go through uh, find support for uh, PayPal when, and totally bypass in the support stuff in the bonus area or anything else go right to PayPal and put in a dispute over it well to me that's you know taking a lot of effort to totally avoid taking action the right action in in absorbing in the content how anyone could take in all that you know to me just lets me know that of course that this the type of person that this um, buyer was obviously is to you know um, purchase something um, and is probably a, one of those serial refunders for it the sad sense is that of course uh, because the affiliate is on uh, instant commission uh, because they have a proven track record. They've sold these products for me in the past um, for products that I've created. So I'm the vendor in this case. Um, when you pay them out and then what you're left with, you're left with half and then someone turns around and does a chargeback. So you get your half taken away plus the, the fee. So it ends up costing me I don't. I ended up in this case not making anything. Um, so ignore the uh, post that I put two hours earlier. 
about you know uh, proof of income it's still proof of income but uh, Yes, you can make money in your sleep. You should also get robbed in your sleep as well, apparently. Um, because in, in this case, you know, it ended up not just, you know, costing, like, instead of, you know, having it taken away, it, it, it with the PayPal fees and the JVZoo or Warrior Plus feed that gets taken out, this is the risk that vendors take where on a larger scale, of course, you know, if you're doing hundreds, thousands of products, that does add up, you know, um, when you start refunding and paying out fees back to all those um, for, for all that. Um, these are the reasons why vendors disapprove different affiliates um, so when you want to promote a product, make sure that you're indicating exactly, um, articulating, I guess, how you want to uh, promote a product for a vendor. So the lessons in the view of the vendor, um, because they're taking really all the risk for it, um, and the you know if a vendor approves a affiliate and they don't do good what happens is that it makes it harder to um get other affiliates because the epcs are uh drop down um you know the conversion rates for it um you don't send quality traffic, quality leads, and make quality sales, well, that puts the, the vendor at a disadvantage, makes it hard for to promote future products. And there's the time and cost factor too, which is you waste that and, you know, the vendor ends up paying more um, than what he, he, he or she uh, makes back from doing these launches so um, I did want to kind of share some of that as well and give some uh, helpful advice you know for those that want to get into either product creation or um, are trying to get approved by different um, vendors to promote different um, affiliate products so that is my take on that um, that's why delayed commission um, for the majority of newbies, someone just starting out in it um, or doesn't have a whole lot of sales or any sales. Um, and if you're doing pro a, a launch or it's your first launch, I highly suggest at least protecting yourself in the sense of making sure that you set the person to delay it, unless they are someone that you actually like, know, and trust um, on a personal or business relationship, um, offline or online, or for example, um, they are a well-established marketer um, that has a lot of sales and, and a low refund rate. Um, that definitely helps. But yeah, this, this was... Uh, this person, I mean, it's fine, it's one, but it's kind of disappointing because I don't know what the fallout of uh, that would be because I've never gotten a, a, a PayPal um, dispute before. I put in disputes, but usually it's more physical products. Like, you know, you buy something on Amazon or eBay and, and it doesn't show up, um, you know, those type of things. And you're waiting for it and the, the seller isn't getting back to you or they're trying to take you for a ride. I mean, that that's different, right? Um, yeah, it's just, I don't want my account limited. Definitely don't want that. I don't want to ban. This is the first and only time that I've gotten a, a PayPal dispute against me. Um, I mean, had the person just come to me and I probably could have cleared anything up and 
given a refund for it, I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't even acknowledge. I would have just been like, okay, whatever. I know your deal. You're just obviously, you know, buying a product because you downloaded it and now you own it. So when I refund it, you still got it. So you're just trying to get it for free. I get that. I'm, I wasn't born yesterday. I, like, I'm not an idiot. And that's fine. I know that there's a lot of freebie seekers out there and people that try and get products, you know, from the Black Hat forums and other places. But um, it didn't really need to come down to a PayPal dispute. So um, when it comes to that, of course, every option that comes up, I'm, of course, going to challenge it. So instead of just coming to me, putting in a support ticket, going, I'm not happy with the product or whatever, I don't even need an excuse why, really. I, that's beside the point. If someone's not happy with one of my products and you're within the refund rate, I don't care. I, I'm, I care about the fact that, you know, that's sad. I definitely, if you could provide me feedback, sure. I would love to just improve my product, but you are going to get your refund no if ands or buts about it and but you don't need to put out like you don't if you're not happy go to support and ask for a refund don't go and put a friggin paypal dispute like oh no the, you know like they never even like contact me so one it looks bad on the on the person putting in the, the dispute for that because they never even contacted uh the the buyer or the vendor in this case uh, so I'm sure PayPal looks at that and is like, you didn't even bother to contact them and you're putting in a dispute? Thanks for wasting our time. Second of all, I get a chance to challenge that where normally, if it were my support, I wouldn't really get to challenge it in a way because I would have just been like, well, yeah, my hands are tied. It's within the refund rate so or, or, or period of time. Here you go. Have to, you know, take onus on that. But in this case... When you put in a dispute, yes, okay, you want a challenge about it. Fine, we'll do that then. So now, instead of just, here you go, here's a refund, it becomes, so now we're going to drill down to the specifics of how was the the item not as described. Because, yes, I'll, I'll be, a, you know, hard in that way. And, yes, I do want screenshots and a blood sample and everything else. Because if you're going to make my life hard, I'm going to make it just as hard on you for you to get anything. So you're really going to have to bleed it out for that. So you're not doing a service to yourself by doing that, really. And, honestly, you make enemies in that sense because... Um, you know, now other uh, product vendors aren't going to sell to you. Now, what's going to happen is when you want to buy something, you're not going to be able to. Um, you'll never be able to buy another product for me ever again. Um, I'm networked with a lot of other vendors, you know. So, you know, there's another one for the blacklist, I guess. So... I don't know, it's just foolish. Anyway, just thought I'd share that. Um, it is what it is. I got out their projects. Like, we're hustling and doing that stuff too. Um, so, you know, remember guys, stay humble, stay hungry. Okay, thanks, bye.